So look guys, I'm gonna be honest, I've not posted in over a year because unlike all of these other people you're following on YouTube, teaching you how to run agencies, I've actually been behind the scenes building my agency. Now in the last 12 months since I've been MIA from YouTube, I've actually grown my agency based off a run rate from last month's figures to about 6.3 million US dollars a year in revenue. So I'm gonna show you in this video three main things I've done differently this year. Side note, it isn't fun, it is hard, and it's not very nice. But I highly recommend you watch this video because if you want to actually learn from somebody who's been there and done it, unlike all of these other 16 year olds posting on YouTube, trying to get you to buy their course, you have like two clients, then I'd really recommend you watch because if I'd actually learned this earlier, I would have saved myself millions and millions of dollars. So the first main thing I've done differently this year is implemented feedback loops. And like I said, these feedback loops can be brutal at times. You need to put your ego to the side because honestly, if you're not willing to get feedback, you're not willing to get better, but feedback sometimes can be a bit of taste to swallow. A feedback loop is essentially a loop where you get feedback from a customer, you make that change, you then go back and get more feedback from the customer, make that change. And the idea is over time, by making constant iterations from feedback from your clients, you're then able to consistently improve your service, improve your business and generate more revenue off the back of that. I've actually hired somebody full time in the business now whose sole job and responsibility is to get this feedback from clients so we can make that consistent improvements. You know, we get feedback from our clients during the onboarding process. We get feedback for our clients every single month thereafter that and sometimes more consistently in between depending on the feedback that was given. Now, up until about three months ago, we were definitely doing something with our feedback. Core issue was we were being reactive with our feedback, meaning we were almost waiting until it was too late. A mistake was made. A client wasn't happy about something. We weren't aligned about something for us to then go and make that iteration and change so it wouldn't happen again. But the difference with this new style since I've hired somebody full time is being we are proactively getting these feedback loops. So regardless of where a client's at, how they're seeming in the one-to-one -one conversations, our, our onboarding call, whatever, we've got somebody separate in the team proactively reaching out to them, asking how they're finding it, what feedback do they have, what are they enjoying, what, what could be improved, and if there's anything there that we could do to make their experience even better. And when we're at a stage now where we've got hundreds of clients, this is fantastic because we're able to notice consistent trend lines, you know, and then prioritize those improvements. Now I'll give you a real time example about something that would not have improved in the business if I didn't get a feedback loop. So we started reaching out to all of our clients. Consistent feedback was around the onboarding process and, and tracking taking time. There was a consistent theme that tracking was becoming an issue. But what we realized was is we didn't think the clients were necessarily getting frustrated about tracking because we were explaining to them, okay, we're going and doing this tracking thing. What we realized the core issue was, wasn't actually the tracking. It was the education element. So we realized that it wasn't that clients necessarily had an issue with the fact that we were doing the tracking and it was taking a few days. They were instead getting frustrated that their time of onboarding was taking a bit longer. However, what, what we realized is once we started to educate our clients on the importance of tracking and setting up pixel tracking ahead of going on and doing our paid ad strategy and scaling up ad spend and things of that nature, once we explained about the detrimental effects of not having tracking in place and how much money that that could cost them, that framed the occasional two, three day delay to get that tracking set up on onboarding and it framed it in a completely different way to now they're buzzing the fact that we're doing this tracking free of charge for them when they get onboarded and they're blown away by the value that that's gonna add to their business over the long term. So even something as small as interesting in that, we know why we do tracking, but the clients didn't know the exact outcome, what was in it for them, why we were doing it, how, why that was benefiting them, and that was causing potential friction and issues. So we got that consistent feedback, we iterated, we now educate, and that problem should never happen again. And the core thing about these feedback loops are, it allows your progression, improvement, and service to skyrocket like this, and as we know, improve service means more retention, which means more revenue, which means more referrals, more testimonials, which means more new clients, and essentially more growth. So if you think, if you do this over a long enough time horizon, you keep getting feedback, then you make iteration, you get feedback, iteration. Over a long enough time horizon, you're gonna get to a point where you have literally no constructive feedback on your service, and the customer experience is flawless throughout the whole process. And when you get to that stage, it's really, really special for the business, and you set yourself completely apart from your competition. And final note on the point of feedback loops. Remember, feedback loops aren't always constructive. Feedback loops can also be positive and, and allow you to reinforce that positive behavior for your clients. So sometimes you can get constant feedback. Oh my God, I absolutely loved how you did this. I love when this happened. I love this part of the onboarding process. I really love it when this happened. And then you can make a conscious decision to do more of those things for your clients. So again, two core takeaways here. Get good feedback to reinforce that behavior to ensure you do more of it and get constructive feedback about potential 
potential issues and problems within your service so you can then solve that problem and over a long enough time horizon build a fantastic service that your competition can literally not compete with. Honestly, if I'd done this sooner, I'd have saved myself millions of dollars in revenue. So the second key improvement that allowed me to drastically scale my revenue, this is such an important one. Again, simple, doesn't necessarily mean easy, but it's metric tracking. What you've got to think is you literally cannot improve what you don't measure. I mean metrics throughout the whole of your business, from the sales side in terms of how much outreach you're doing, what your book rate is, to then what your show up rate is to the meetings, what your close rate, you're paying full percentages. But then even on the back end, things like churn percentage, individual churn, team churn, and dozens of other metrics that can allow you to actually measure and identify the performance of your business and your team. And the way I like to see metrics, it's almost like an X-ray or an MRI of your business, essentially allowing you to see through everything and identify exactly where the issue is so then you can solve it. There's absolutely zero subjectivity in numbers. It's purely objective. And let me tell you a story to really drive this home. So I wanna talk about this specifically in terms of my sales team. So if I look over the last couple of months and look at my sales team's metrics, you've got both team metrics and individual metrics. Now, without tracking the metrics across the board, if you just looked at the team metrics, you'd have been happy. We were closing over a 30% close rate for all of our clients. Our pay in full percentage was really high. And on the surface, if I just looked at the top level numbers of the team, you'd have thought everything's going good, nothing to worry about, no need to spend your time there. However, when we actually dived a bit deeper and looked at an individual closer performance, we looked across all of my closers on my team. We had one guy at 40%, another guy on 40%, another guy at high 30s, and one person on about 10 to 20% close rate. So although on the surface of things, it looked like things were looking great as a team were hitting KPI, in reality, one person was so below KPI that if that person was actually at KPI, as a team, we would have been way above KPI. To just give you some examples of what that means in terms of numbers, the actual revenue cost of that person not performing at KPI was actually about 20,000 pounds a month in additional revenue. So just to give you an example there, on the surface, it seems fine, but when you actually dive deeper and look at the metrics, because we track all of the metrics on an individual and team basis, we've just found an issue there that's costing us over 20 grand a month as a business. So what we ended up doing, my head of sales ended up having you know conversations with that person, put them on a performance plan, offering them support, reducing the amount of calls that they had. Over time, that performance continued to not improve. That The feedback that my head of sales was given was you know not being listened to. And unfortunately, we had to part ways with that sales rep. But now fast forward to this month, the whole team sales rate is over 40%, actually close to 50%. You can see here how individual performance feeds team performance. You know, it's the same way if we're talking on a media buyer and, and a service delivery perspective, how your individual ad performance, which feeds your overall campaign performance, it's the exact same thing. Your individual team performance is what then feeds the team KPI. So everyone's got to be operating at their KPI or above to be able to then feed the overall team being able to hit that. And a bonus tip here as well, when you track metrics, always, always, always focus on the most important thing. Because, you know, sometimes on the surface, even just like, you know, if you're below KPI on something like show up rate, once you have your numbers in front of you, you can map out all of those numbers where you're not actually at KPI or people in your team are underperforming, work out a negative opportunity cost, look at what that number is and basically attack it top down. What's costing me the most amount of money? Just go and sort that. Then when that's solved, go and sort that next thing. And it allows you to prioritize in an objective way. So the third main difference, and in my opinion, this is absolutely the most important, but also probably the hardest and the, the one that I struggled with the most, candid, being completely radically honest with everyone I deal with in the business, whether this is suppliers, whether this is customers, whether this is team members. And when I say being radically candid, when I mean being radically honest, again, that can go both ways. Radically honest in a fact like, oh my God, that's just the absolute best thing on earth. Or, you know, unfortunately, this is not good enough. Here's what we need to do to make it better. Now, before we break this down a little bit further, I know some some of you are probably thinking immediately here, oh my God, I hate conflict. Like I just cannot do this. It's not the way I am. It's gonna make me look like a bad person, this, that, and the other. I just wanna tell you a quick story. So growing up when I went to school, I was bullied. Uh, I was a massive introvert. I was super, super shy, you know, very socially awkward. And I do think a lot of that shyness, a lot of that avoiding of conflict came from me being bullied. To give you an example, I think this is honestly where it stems from for a lot of the time from me personally. As I remember every single day in the morning, I used to have to get the bus to school. And when I'd get the bus to school because I lived not necessarily in the catchment area for the school that I went to. I had to travel quite far to get to school every day. And oftentimes what that meant is when I would on the bus with all of my friends from school, I'd actually end up on a bus with the catchment area for another school. But my first bus I'd get on would be with a bunch of school kids from a completely different school. And I was very overweight at school. I was I was fat. I was, you know, basically this fat, shy kid, had no confidence. And I remember every single day I would go and get on that bus and there was people that used to sit at the back of the bus and there was these really, really horrible kids that used to bully me. They 
used to sit every morning at the back of the bus. Um, and if you live in the UK, you know it's like you go right to the back of the bus and there's a big long seat right at the back. Two of the guys used to sit one side, you know, one or two of the guys used to sit the other side. And every day they used to keep a seat for me in the middle and the bus was so packed, they used to keep that seat for me. And every morning when I'd come in, I'd get on the bus and they'd literally call me up to go and sit with them and they'd call me fat, they'd make names for me. I used to have to sit in between that every day for 30 minutes every morning where they would bully me, they would take the mick out of me for being fat and they would do this every single day. And you can imagine the dread that I would feel every single morning getting up or going to bed, knowing the next morning I was gonna get on that bus, those school kids were gonna be there and they were gonna have that space for me sat, I'd have to go. And even if I'd go in and stand at the front of the bus, they would basically call me up. And back then I was the type of person that I just, you know, a bit like a sheep, right? If they would say that I'd, I'd always walk up, you know? And that for me, that dread every single night made me essentially build up this absolute avoidance of conflict that later in life would not really come to serve me whatsoever, especially when it comes to running a business. So maybe you guys can relate, you know? I think most successful people have got stories like that, maybe where they've been bullied and there's that want for validation or, you know, proof of self-worth. And I know for me that was a big driver, but the big issue that caused was it meant everything that I would go and then to do in my life, in my sort of early 20s and in my sort of late teens when I'd go on, it made me have this complete lack of self-confidence. It meant that I would do absolutely anything to avoid conflict. But the byproduct of this, unfortunately, was that when it came to me running a business, it actually made me a very poor communicator. It made me a very poor leader, a very poor manager, because I would almost sugarcoat everything. I'd feel bad saying what I truly wanted. And I don't know if this was either to almost make people want to like me or to avoid conflict, and or maybe it was just a mixture of everything based off of what I went through when I was bullied at school. And what would happen is, over time, I would ask my team to do things for me, and then it wouldn't get done. And, you know, I would say, can you go and do this thing? And it wouldn't get done. You know, and all this led to is frustrations, me banging my head against the wall, asking people in my team, asking clients to do things for me, communicating with them, and literally never getting what I wanted. And my initial response in the beginning was always to blame the team member, blame the client. They don't understand it. Why are they not doing that? Why are they not getting it? You know, and almost put the blame onto that other person. Whereas in reality, I was a bad communicator because I was simply sugarcoating everything and not asking and being specific for what I actually wanted. And this crazy thing happened over the last few years, right? I started to be more specific, not sugarcoating, giving really honest feedback to the team, you know, being honest from a perspective of helping that person develop to get better results for, in their own career from a team member perspective. I started being more honest and direct with my clients, telling them exactly what they need to do, challenging clients back if they had an idea and they were disagreeing with me, challenging them back to say, no, we have to do this because of X, Y, Z. Being incredibly honest, being far more direct. I'm, I'm not saying being rude, okay? I'm not saying be rude at all here. There's a way to word and position everything, but I was simply saying what I wanted and getting what I wanted off the back of it because I was being incredibly honest. And again, back to the same point, this is something that's incredibly simple, but simple is oftentimes hard. Simple doesn't always mean easy. We know we need to do it, you know? The main thing I can say for you here, if you're looking to build a business, the best thing you can be at all times is incredibly honest. Honest with your clients, honest with your team members, because the more honest you are, the more you can actually sit down with somebody and tell them exactly how you're feeling, the more you will do them service. You know, with your client, if your goal, number one goal, is to get your clients amazing results and a challenge and a client pushes back on you for that, and you know in the deep down the strategy they should be doing is the one that, that you have in mind, and you know that's gonna help them hit their goal and get them better results, it's your duty to be honest, because by you being honest and saying, no, 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 it, we don't wanna do it this way, we wanna go and do this, this, and this, and here's why we wanna do it, what you're actually doing by being a bit more, it's not even confrontational, but by being a bit more direct, by being a bit more confident in, in your communication skills, you're actually helping your clients achieve better goals. Same with the team members. You know, oftentimes if you go to a team member and you can give them really honest feedback about their work, don't sugarcoat it, it just makes it confusing. Don't give them all this praise, 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 praise all the time on stuff, but then don't pull them up on their bad stuff. The most development comes from the areas that you want to see improved and giving that honest feedback. So the next thing there is honesty with clients, honesty with team members, because the more honest you are with team members, the more they can then go on to develop their own skills and they will make more progress and they will then develop further in their own careers as well and they will develop as people as well. But yeah, if you're anything like me and maybe you really used to struggle with, you know, being honest, I think a lot of it, the main takeaway for me was just how you frame it. I see being honest as the biggest gift you can give to somebody, be that a client, be that a team member, because 
the more honest you are, the more you can help them towards actually hitting what their goals are. You know, ultimately, if a client wants to achieve great results, you challenge them on using the best stra strategy is going to help them get better results. You know, you challenging a team member and being honest about some of their work and giving them some feedback on their work and where they can be better is helping them produce better work and have a better chance of promotion and then ultimately improving more in their career and getting more development. So the more you can be incredibly honest and see honesty as a gift, not as this big confrontational thing, oh my God, what am I going to do? They're going to hate me for it. No, you will get far more respect from everybody you know as a leader. You'll get far more respect as a supplier to your clients if you are honest and candid at all times, as long as that honesty has their best nature in mind at all times. If you enjoyed this style of video, you want me to make more content 